about the fact that you have shone a light on the somewhat awkward power equation that existed with Manmohan Singh as the Prime Minister and Sonia Gandhi as the Congress leader. Now, yes, it was nine years ago, but some of the questions raised about the dualism of that power arrangement are relevant to the Congress's fortunes even today. And, you know, the Congress has an elected president, but there are many people who believe that he could not have been elected without the blessings of the Gandhi family. Even today, there's no government for the Congress, but the, the sense is that all key decisions are not taken by Malika Arjun Kharge, they are taken by the Gandhi family. So that dualism and, and, and what it you know could result in remains a relevant question. Do you believe that you did not get uh, a second stint uh, in the government of UPA too, because the Gandhis did not like you. Well, I don't know, I mean, and what I, I mean, do the Gandhis like you? Uh, frankly, I don't know. Do that. you like the Gandhis? No, it's not a question of like. I'll tell you, because it's not about I'm like. Professionally, no, no, I'm it's not about making a facile yeah, comment. It's not about like or yeah. dislike. Uh, in fact, if you go back, I have a fairly detailed discussion both in the accidental prime minister. And in the book 1991, which I wrote about Darsima Rao, right. about the history of the relationship between Congress president and prime minister. It goes back a long way. It began with Jawaharlal Nehru. When Nehru was prime minister, Acharya Kripalani was Congress president. Mm. And Acharya Kripalani said to Nehru that, look, you should keep me informed. I'm the, I'm the party. You're the government. You should keep me informed what's happening. And Nehru said, forget it. I take an oath of office. A note of secrecy. I cannot tell you unless you join my government. So come in as a minister with our portfolio and sit in the cabinet meetings. Then you'll know what we are dis discussing. But otherwise, till a decision of the government is made public, I cannot share it with you merely because you're Congress president. And Acharya Kriplani finally resigned. But this whole issue of the relationship between head of government and head of party began with Nehru and Kriplani. And I put it all in writing to give the context. The problem was that with the communist parties, traditionally, not just in India, but Soviet Union and China, the party president was always the boss. And in fact, the head of government was answerable to the party president. I mean, Brujnev, Mao Zedong, mm. the party general secretaries. Who was president of China was irrelevant. Now it's different with Xi Jinping having all the jobs, right? And the CPM, when it came to power in Bengal, Pramod Das Gupta was the party president. Jyoti Basu was the chief minister. Jyoti Basu had to go every day and report to Pramod Das Gupta what he was up to. Mm. And Sitara Vyachuri gave this as an example to Sonia Gandhi and to Manmohan Singh, saying this is how, you know. So it was a model adopted by the Congress from the communists. Mm. Now, of course, today people say, but that's what is happening, that the BJP government of Modi is answerable to the RSS. And RSS is the shadow. But I don't think that's true, actually, in the Modi government's case. Well, whether it's true or not, people I mean, say you that. You had, you had past examples in the Vajpayee government where the RSS, for example, has vetoed the choice of a finance minister, as we all remember. But in the Modi government, you could possibly argue that Modi has transcended the RSS. Yeah, but again, as I don't know what happens inside the government. But I'm telling you the view perception outside is that the RSS is very much in the room. I mean, recently there was a news report that Prime Minister Modi met with Amit Shah, J.P. Nadda and an RSS functionary. Four of them sat for several hours to discuss obviously various issues relating yeah. to government, government yeah. and party. So there is an RSS presence. Whether they have the last word or not, I don't know. But what I'm saying is that a lot of people today say that why were you criticizing the Congress? Of course, you know, today look at what is happening. That is said of many parties. I mean, Shiv Sena in the old days. Uh, who would go to Bala Sahib ba who had the remote Bala control. Bala had the remote control, right? Uh, so, the question really is, what is the context in which that particular thing was being said? The most you? controversial aspect of your book was the suggestion that you said should have been publicly known anyway, that Sonia Gandhi had a key say in government policy. And to that extent, what was officially the business of government was, in a sense, uh, conveyed to her, ferried to her. They were called secret files. But as you said, it didn't actually mean that a physical file was carried from the prime minister's office to Ten, Ten Janpath. But you spoke about the official Pulak Chatterjee, who was the kind of go-between. It created a major, major outcry at the time. 
Well, that was because Arunab Goswami, our dear friend in the media, uh, chose to focus on that in the very first interview that he did with me on the day my book came out. And then that was deliberately picked up by the BJP and distorted to suggest that I had said files were shown to Sonia. And I had to immediately go on television later saying the book doesn't say it. And of course the book doesn't say it. But the book does but say that no. she had a say in policy. No, no, no. Look, they're two different things. That's very important. Government files come under the Official Secrets Act. And therefore, for anybody outside government, which is the issue that Nehru addressed to Kriplani, anyone in government to show a file to someone outside would be contravening the Official Secrets Act. That is an illegal act. But for a policy to be discussed, let's say Mag Narega, uh, Narega okay? uh, the government says we are planning to do this. Let's discuss what we should be doing with the party. There's nothing illegal in that. But I think the real issue here was that these daily meetings of Kulok with Mrs. Gandhi, they happen and nobody has denied that. I know they, they were happening. Um, and more importantly, a lot of key positions uh, you had to qualify by appearing for a virtual I mean, I know this for a fact 